All right, you guys. So let's begin the lesson on figure drawing. We are going to use the same system that I like to do for a lot of things, which is break it down into the components um, in a more systematic way, a more scientific way of looking at it. So by breaking it down, it's not as scary as like looking at a figure and trying to draw it sight on scene, which is pretty hard for most people. Um, this is going to allow us to simplify the form into lines and shape, and it is much easier to draw figures that way. Uh, we're going to look at where body parts are in relation to each other and the proportion of the body. Um, we're going to look at how perspective and angles can help us uh, get the base form of our figure while before we start doing details and such. So anatomy is important throughout the whole process of figure drawing, but it really comes um, in hand when you're drawing the details of the body. Okay, so to start off, you're gonna need some paper. It doesn't have to be special. It can be that newsprint paper, that really cheap stuff at the art store, or even just computer paper. The regular eight and a half by 11 um, paper works fine. Something that you can practice and it doesn't really matter that you're doing a lot of it um, because the more practice you get, the better you get. Um, we are going to need a ruler. It doesn't have to be this clear one, but it does help you get perpendicular lines when you're setting up your template. <clears throat> so any type of ruler, straight edge. You need a pencil, obviously. Preferably not mechanical. You don't want hard lead. If you have artist pencils and you have soft B, then use that over the, the H, the hard graphite. Um, the softer the lead, the easier your strokes are going to be, the, the broader and smoother they're going to be. In this process of finding the proportion of your human figure, you don't want to make small little sketching marks. You want to have confident, broad, sweeping strokes, okay? So try to get rid of any of that inhibition that you're not doing a good job or you're scared of what your drawing's gonna look like in the end. Don't be worried about mistakes right now. You just want to start getting used to the, um, the look of what a human figure looks like. We're studying and exercising the proportions of it. And the more you do that, uh, the less you rely on templates like this and your eye just becomes familiar and conditioned to what a human figure should look like. Okay, so you'll also need a, an eraser, potentially something big, um, like an artist's eraser, uh, because you'll be doing probably more erasing than that little tiny one on the end of a pencil will provide you with. So a nice big artist eraser is good. Now, once you have all your stuff set up and your supplies ready, go ahead and make a line directly down the middle of your paper. Now, bodies are split up into sections when we're talking about proportion. You want to use a unit of measure or what they call a canon, a C-A-N-O-N. A canon is, I think, ancient Greek for um, or Latin for a unit of measure. So you can say an eight canon human figure, meaning it's eight units tall. Uh, a lot of times artists will say eight head figure because it is eight heads tall. And that is a system that they adopted a long time ago that they used the size of the head as the the measuring unit. Um, and so that's where you hear the term an eight head figure or a nine head figure. The typical human body is around seven to eight heads tall because humans are very different from each other. We vary a lot. 
Uh, you have shorter people and taller people and wider people and skinnier people. Uh, typically, it's between seven and eight heads tall. We are going to use the eight heads tall method. So you want to, after you draw your medial line, which is going to be our central line, this line um, splits our figure into two equal parts because we're starting with a very neutral figure. He, he or she is standing forward, straight forward, and it's very neutral. They're not shifting any weight. They're just standing very balanced, okay? They're looking straight forward and they're standing very balanced. So this medial line is going to split our figure into two equal sections, a left and a right. Now we need to give ourselves the eight sections to work with our proportions. Because I'm using a big piece of paper, I'm gonna go for one and a half inches per section. If you're using a um, typical computer paper, you'll want to do about an inch, okay? Um, because your computer paper is 11 inches tall or long, you can fit eight sections in there easily and have that three inches extra on the top and bottom. Try to center your figure. Don't do it all the way on the bottom or all the way on the top, but put it in the center. So go ahead and give yourself cross marks all the way down that line, one at the top, and then you would do one inch if you're doing the one inch measuring unit. I'm gonna do one and a half. So at every interval, give yourself a cross mark. And then take your ruler the perpendicular way and give yourself some horizontal lines at every cross mark. Now this is where this clear ruler comes in handy because um, you can see the grid through the ruler and you can line these smaller lines up with your vertical line and it gives you perfectly perpendicular lines to work with. Now you don't have to go all the way across your paper from edge to edge. If you want to, that's fine, but you don't need to. Just give yourself enough space that you're able to comfortably work. Okay, so each one of these sections is for us to use in relation to other body parts, okay? And now having said that we're using, using the measurement unit, the canon of a single head, which would fill one of these spaces entirely, we start off with that. Give yourself a, an oval in the top space of your template. And I'm gonna try to sketch really dark so you guys can see it on the camera. Um, but typically when you're doing the base structure of your figure drawing, you wanna be pretty light with it. It doesn't mean not confident. You wanna be confident and sweeping and continuous with your motions, but put down a light line so you can revise it if you want to. Um, Another good thing is to use different colors. If you have different colored pencils or uh, pastels or um, chalks, uh, you can use lighter colors like say a taupe or a brown and use that as your first layer of sketching and then move to a darker or more vibrant color over that and make your revisions. Um, if you're drawing not from memory, if you're drawing from a paper, you can look at it and compare it to your sketch and say, oh, that arm is too far over, let me move it over. And that's what your other color, your second layer would be good for. Okay, moving forward. In this second section right here, you have the shoulder line that comes about one third into this second section. So. After this line, come about one third. So if I have thirds, I have one, two, three. I'm right 
here with my shoulders. And people have different widths of shoulders, how broad your shoulders are. That varies a lot. But you, I mean, every one of us, we know so many humans. Use your judgment. This is about how wide shoulders are, okay? Uh, that's going to change if you're drawing a woman compared to a man, right? Um, but a lot of these placements are unisex, so it doesn't really matter what we're going for for a lot of these. You can make uh, little tweaks to accommodate whatever style you're going for. Um, okay. So, remember I said that we're simplifying the body into shapes and lines, right? Well, our bodies have a very rigid, uh, definitive structure underneath it, and that's our skeletal system. And that is a good way to get the very first base foundational sketching for your human figure. You can use the line of the spine to get that first line. Look at this angle of her shoulders. So if I were drawing this picture over here, I would start with her head and I would take that line and the angle of the spine. I would combine it with the angle of the shoulders. I would just give a simple line right here. And then I would give a simple line for the spine and then a simple line for the hip. And that would give me the overall movement of her torso. So this is what I'm talking about when we simplify it. We're going to move into that, but first we're trying to just understand the proportions. So let's um, study where our body parts fall on this template for now. So we've talked about the shoulders. Now, this next line is about where the center of the breasts are or where the nipples are. And get used to it. We're talking about anatomy. It's not a funny or gross, weird word. It's just nipples. Both men and, me and females have them. They are, lie at this third line though, about, okay? So this is where nipples would be if you are including that in your sketch, this line right here. This fourth line at the end of your third section, this is where the navel is. And you should be writing all of this down on your sketch. So it's imprinting in your brain and all of this information is getting reiterated in your memory. So the navel is on that fourth line at the bottom of the third section. Okay, navel. Now, Coincidentally, the navel is also where the, the elbows lie, okay? And this is going to be where we sort of block out the shape of our elbow joint. So while it's near the same line as the navel, the elbow joint is going to land directly above that same line. Okay, moving on to the next section, this is where the crotch of the human figure is, okay? This is where the bottom of our pelvis bone is going to land. So just beside that line, write your word, crotch. And again, this is human anatomy. It's not a funny or weird word. Just get used to it. Also, this is the same line where your wrist is. So put that with crotch and then moving all the way down to the bottom of the sixth unit of measure. That's where your knees are going to land. Now real quick with your elbows and your knees, the line that they correspond with, they actually lie right above the lines. So it your figure would look a little bit off if you were to draw your joints directly on that line. So just keep in mind that your elbow, your elbows and your knees, both, the joints land right above that line. So when we mark our spaces for it, we're going to move a little bit above that line to uh, block our space out. 
Okay, moving on. We don't have to draw a spine in this one because remember this figure is neutral. It's not shifting any weight. The spine is not curved. It's very straight because the figure is uh, straightforward head on. So this medial line that we drew initially will act as our spine. But we do need to take our um, fill in our torso. So coming down from this shoulder line that we put in one third into our second unit, bring it down to right above where the navel is in a sort of trapezoid shape because our shoulders and our rib cage make up in a simplified form pretty much a trapezoid. And you can go between the halfway mark of that unit, this third unit, you can move between the halfway mark and the two-thirds mark. Remember, humans vary a lot, so that's a little bit um, arbitrary. You can choose that yourself. Okay, next, at the um, between the navel and the crotch line, we have this fourth section okay here's our crotch here's the navel we want to put in our pelvis bone so it's pretty much a a pretty basic v shape like imagine it coming down and imagine how much space is between the legs right there so it's not a lot but it's a little bit and then just give yourself a little top it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really come up all the way to this line. So again, we're not filling this whole unit in. We're coming up um, shy of a quarter or a third. It's up to you. So this will be our pelvis bone. And you can make it a little bit wider if you want. If it's male, it's usually more slender. Um, okay, and then moving all the way down to the uh, sixth line, we are going to put our knees right above that line. So block out the space of your knees. And this person is standing straight, so their feet aren't necessarily touching. They are just coming right down from the hips. So give it a little bit of space, but Imagine your legs coming right down from this. So, and that's what we're going to do. Imagine your femur, your bone, your leg bone, the bone in your thigh coming down. It connects into your pelvis bone right here, and then it comes down to connect to this. Same on this side. Comes down to connect to your knee joint. And then right below it, we have our calves, and they come right below that, and they are not meeting each other, but they are pretty close. And then you can just give yourself a little triangle or trapezoid for the foot shape, general foot shape. If we were looking at a foot straight on, it would look sort of, sort of like this, right? You don't have any length to it. It just is a sort of sort of trapezoid shape. Okay, next we're going to just um, we're going to complete this shape. So connect your torso to your hip bones or your pelvis bones. And then we're gonna figure out our shoulders. Or actually, let's do our neck first. Um, so in anatomy, we have what is called a suprasternal notch, and that's at the very bottom of your neck where your collarbones are, that little V before, right in between your collarbones at the bottom of your neck, that little V is called a suprasternal notch. So you can draw that in if you want, not necessary, but your neck is a little bit smaller than the width of your head, right? And it just comes down to meet your shoulder line. 
Obviously, you have muscles right here that give us a shape like this, but that can go in um, with details later, okay? Uh, so to get your arms now, give yourself, uh, block some space out for your shoulders, which are, just give them little circles. This is where simplifying these shapes come in handy. Um, and we're not going really far outside of our torso trapezoid that we made, just sort of in this area, like sort of centered on the, on the lines actually. So our elbows now, we want to connect our shoulder to our elbow and then to our wrist. Remember, our elbow joint is right here on this line, but it lies right above it, okay? And if a person were standing comfortably, their arms wouldn't be directly close to their body, there would be like a little bit of space, okay? So that's why I drew, drew my elbows a little bit away from the body. Now you can connect your shoulders to your elbow joints and then your wrist remember the wrist and crotch line is this next line just bring your line down to that and then you can start your hand so in a simplified version hands are a little bit like this like a little sideways V almost and the size of your hands, they're pretty much two thirds of this unit right here. So a good way to gauge where your hands should end is two thirds of the way down of this unit. This is our crotch and wrist line right here. Okay, so that is our human form, the very base structure of our human form, okay? Now, if we wanted to find the placement of our facial features, we would cross this oval right in the middle. You can go slightly above the middle, but it's pretty typically right around the center of your head um, that your eyes are. So, and then also to get the width of your eyes, you can go right in the center of this left that you just made. So directly on this uh, line that you just drew and then in the center of this left side that you have. See how it's centered right here? Same on this side. Okay, and that's pretty basic for spacing of eyes. Although everybody has different you know, eye spacing, but typically. Okay, so this is um, how we want to see uh, and how we want to um, relate parts of the body to other parts of the body, okay? That's how uh, we get our proportions. This is like a studied and well-known way to exercise this. Uh, so now that we have this, we can move on to um, filling in these areas and then we'll try to do some figure drawing with the images. Um, and these will be some exercises for you to do. We will be moving into fashion drawing um, they're called croquis. The models that you draw to wear your designs, they are called croquis. C-R-O-Q-U-I-S, croquis. And they are taller and more elongated than the normal human figure. So at the very least, they are nine heads tall. If you want to be more realistic with your fashion drawings, it is typically a nine head figure and that ninth space usually accounts for the heels that they're wearing because this whole bottom space would be taken up by the length of their foot wearing a heel. Um, other uh, designers like to use either 10 or 12 heads tall, which really gives you like this 
super elongated figure that's almost like supernatural looking, but it's very stylized. So that's an intentional choice that designers make when they decide to uh, adopt a style of their own. Uh, okay, so I'm going to part out these videos and I'm going to return and we will start with the second part. Okay, moving forward with part two of this, um, we're, this is going to be a shorter uh, portion probably. Uh, we're going to talk about um, how to fill in this structure that we gave ourselves. Um, this is the majority of the information. This proportion section that we already went over, um, it's, it's probably the most information out of everything. So take your figure that you have, your proportion figure on the template that you just did, and let's talk about musculature and how to fill in the shapes of the actual body and not just having sort of a stick figure um, when we're uh, referring to the skeletal structure. Um, now we're going to be considering the muscular structure, musculature of the body. Um, so, we already talked about from the neck, we have these um, little sort of triangle shapes that come down from the neck and meet your shoulder line, okay? So go ahead and fill in that area. We talked about our suprasternal notch right here in the center bottom of your neck. Uh, this usually, or this definitely, is where your collarbone uh, begins and it comes out to meet your, your shoulder, okay? And your shoulder muscles are rounder and then it sort of sinks in. It might have a bulge right here for another muscle and then get skinnier to meet your elbow. Then your elbow has a pointier shape, then comes back in, and your forearm has a bigger muscle at the top near the elbow and comes down into the wrist. Uh, and it pretty similarly mirrors itself on the inside of the body. So. So just fill in your arm like that and then the same on the other side. So you have your collarbone that's going to come out and meet your, it sort of curves down and then back upward to meet the shoulder muscle, the rounder bit. And again, it comes back in a little bit and then out for a muscle, then back in to meet your elbow. Then your elbow has a little bit of an angle, a pointy triangle shape. Then it meets your forearm muscle and is a nice round shape that comes back into your wrist. Okay, so there, that is our um, arm, or both of our arms completed. Now for our torso, think about your ribs. They have a pretty um, straightforward shape coming down from the armpit and then usually comes in right at the very natural waist, the smallest part of your waist, and comes out to meet your hip bones. So it's not far off from the basic shapes that we made. But then you have um, some different, some little nuances here that start to happen. After your hip bone right here, you have this sort of flatter area where your legs begin. 
and then you start to have your thigh muscle which comes out like this and then back in to come meet your knee. So our, our muscles on the inside of our legs, we have a little more fat and muscle here at the top and then if you're very fit it gets skinnier right here and then your knee would sort of take up a little bigger shape right at the knee joint. Same for this side. And then the calves are pretty similar mirrored wise, but there's a difference in the outside of your calf. It has a uh, more continuous curve that starts all the way at the top. And then the inside has more of a curve toward the center of your calf. Do you see that difference? So this curve is longer and starts closer to the knee on the outside of your calf but the inside calf has a more of a curve that starts in the center of your calf, okay? And then you have some little bones that stick out here and then would go down to flat feet and toes, blah, blah. So fill in the same for the other side. And that is it for our body, the musculature of our body, very basically. Remember we said that the nipples were on this third line at the bottom of the second unit. So that's about right here for male or female. And then just to uh, give some detail to the head, we already blocked it out into four sections, quadrants. Uh, your ears are about in the center on either side. And then your jawbone comes down from that ear in a little uh, sort of a straight down shape and then curves into your chin. Same on the other side, straight down and then curves into your chin. Now you have cheekbones right here, so this is, area is flat and then comes out. And then you can do whatever hair situation. Let's give a hairline, let's say about right there. Then your nose, I usually just do like two nostrils and then some little little marks. Sometimes I find that um, the less you do, the more realistic the uh, features look. See how I just gave the impression of lips right there and it sort of looks better than me fully drawing a set of lips in there. Um, and you can always do that, uh, give the impression of lips by color too, if you just wanted to do like a medium brownish, pinkish color. Um, and then eyebrows, lastly, they come into uh, right above your eyes to meet the uh, top of your bridge of your nose and then depending on the style of eyebrow you want to give them, just draw that in. Okay, so that uh, pretty much is everything for a simple, proportionate uh, human figure, okay? So, Next, 
Uh, the two other exercises that I want to give you guys for homework this Thursday um, is going to be the movement of these human figures. So if you have a printer and you're able to print these off, that is, it's probably wise to do if you want to go ahead and do that because in that case, you can take any type of um, pencil or uh, any type of chalk or pastel and draw right over it. So you can give yourselves very strong visuals of what their, their structure is doing underneath. So give yourself a base of the spine and you can even draw in the angle of the shoulders in relation to the spine. Same with the pelvis and the hip bone. And remember how we were talking about how your pelvis gives a trapezoid shape? Well, this is a good uh, example of that. Now, because this figure is in motion and is such an unbalanced uh, weight, there's a lot of, um, I guess, musculature making some unnatural, or I shouldn't say unnatural, but um, different shapes. Um, and when you're looking at something that is not seen all the time, just keep in mind that you're looking for the skeletal structure underneath. You can see her rib cage is still right here. And this whole area right here being stretched and elongated is just musculature. So while this muscle over here is being condensed, this one is being stretched longer. So this is actually a really good pose to practice figure drawing with. And you can um, expand on that after you get the shoulders, the spine, and the uh, pelvis, the hip line. You can go into the arms. So where are her muscles going? This way, and also this way. And drawing this line over a printed picture is going to uh, further your understanding um, of the figure that you're trying to draw, um, just the relation and the angles. If you've ever seen a, uh, like a caricature of an artist, or say in movies perhaps, where an artist is drawing something and they hold up their thumb or even a pencil and they start making different angles with it, they're trying to relate angles to one another of the subject. So whether they're using their thumb or pencil, the, the straight stick uh, version of that, uh, they are relating angles and shapes to one another. So you can do that by drawing these lines on a printed version. If you're able to do that, it's pretty helpful. Um, and then also, bring it down through her legs. You can see a lot of her musculature um, from the lighting and the shadows, but the base of her skeletal structure is pretty straightforward. Her thigh coming down into her knee joint and then her calf. Now perspective can mean two different things. Perspective meaning in relation to other uh, body parts, like how is this leg angled in relation to this other leg? And you can see negative spaces, you can imagine the, the bone structure underneath, but also perspective can mean is the body part closer or further away? Is her left leg in the forefront or the background? 
and it is a little bit closer. So this foot back here would be a little bit smaller than this, not much. If she had her leg fully extended back there, her, her foot would be much smaller than it is right here. So think about perspective in those two ways, uh, body parts in relation to others and the angles, shapes, and negative forms that they're creating, and then also how far or close the body parts are to the viewer. Um, okay, so just for an example, I'm going to do this one figure over here in the corner, um, and that will be it for our video. So if I were to start this drawing of this girl, I would first give myself the angle of her shoulders. And I'm literally just looking at the lines I drew on top of her and recreating that over here. Uh, then I can see in relation to her shoulders, her spine does a curve like this. And that, that line is um, as long as this one, meaning it ends right here at her crotch. So I'll bring her pelvis, her hip bone, up a little bit, and it's about this angle. And about this width. So then I can give the shape and direction the pelvis is facing. Now I can fill out her torso, which remember this side is elongated because her muscles are stretched on the stomach right here. And then they are scrunched together on this side. I see that there is a line right here for her hip where it's not on this side but it is over here because of the way her leg is propped up on this side and then I'm going to connect her pelvis to the leg lines and her left leg is coming this direction about that long and I'll give my block my space out for my knee joint. I'll give her right leg this sort of shape and I'll block out this knee joint. Her calf on her left foot is doing a shape like this and then her foot begins to start and she has uh, ballet points on, so you have that shape happening. And then the rest of her right leg is a little shorter than a straight on uh, perspective because it is bent and also further back. Now the the bone of her calf coming down from her knee is about like that. So I'm going to recreate that. And then move on to her arms and head. So her arm bones, the foundation her base is about like that. And you really want to have confident sweeping strokes. Um, like I said, no sketchy marks, quick, short, sketchy marks. You want to be really confident with it. And if you mess up, that's fine. Do it again. Get out a new piece of paper and start over. That's why you're using the computer paper anyways. It's cheap and you have a lot of it, hopefully. 
And so he ran out of room for that arm. But so you can't see her neck because it's in the shadows, but because of her head placement, you can tell that her neck would come straight up from her spine and to meet her head properly, it's probably right there. So first I would draw her head shape in in relation to this shoulder line that I made initially, her head is about, uh, realistically, about a quarter inch away <clears throat> and very off center. And it's also tilted down. She's looking down at the ground. So I would tilt my oval this way. Um, when a person is looking to the side or you see the profile of their head, <clears throat> it does not take on that simple oval shape anymore. You might get that just for the straightforward face of a person when you're figure drawing, but a profile is going to give you a whole nother shape. You're going to have a, um, a more irregular shape with the, the head, the back of the head coming out like this and then coming back into the neck. So once you get this base down like we did, we can fill in the musculature of this. Um, her face that is um, to the side and looking down at the ground, I can give her that center line right here just to give me a good base to go off when I'm placing her eyes and facial features. Um, but then I can start filling out all of these muscles and use the picture to do that. Um, it's not arbitrary. You're given the shapes of her body. So look at the simplified version of this and take the shapes only away. We've already got the, the simplified lines of her body. Now simplify the shapes of it. Um, you can simplify things into circles, ovals, rectangles, if it helps you build on the musculature of it. So you can see her thigh muscle dips down a good amount right here and then it comes up right here on the top to meet her knee. She's very muscular. She's a ballet dancer so <clears throat> she has a lot of a lot of shape to her musculature. Okay, that's it for this lesson, you guys. I'll put homework up on Blackboard. Um, if you are interested in figure drawing and want to pursue it a little more on your own, look at Amazon or any online book store. You can get books like this. This is a really great Anatomy for the Artist book by Sarah Simblett. Um, <clears throat> it has basically a lot of scientific information about human anatomy and it tells you um, what to expect from muscles and and what shapes they make uh, there are, are a lot of actual naked forms though in this book so if that weirds you out then maybe this isn't the book for you uh, but yeah, a book like that is great where it um, is very scientific and very in-depth and detailed. Or a book like this, How to Draw the Human Figure. Um, less scientific, more about the art, more about sketching, sight on scene. Um, or you can go the route of a very simple book, Human Anatomy Made Amazingly Easy. Look how easy that looks, huh? All right, you guys, uh, hopefully that made sense and um, you're able to get your assignments done. Email me if you have any other questions uh, and I will be in touch.